Hello everyone and welcome back to the Eternal Watcher where I love to talk about anything related to science fiction or fantasy. Today I'm back and I'm going to be discussing the newest episode of Doctor Who Legend of the Sea Devils which was broadcast yesterday on Easter Sunday. So I'm doing this in like a podcast review form just to make it more interesting and it's not just me talking to you about my opinions on the episode for half an hour and instead I have a couple of other people so today I'm going to be introducing Luke and Hazel how are you doing guys yep surprisingly good uh, I have not recovered from the episode so yeah that's one way to put good, it but it was it was quite something it was an episode um so yeah we might as well get cracking on our initial thoughts going into the episode because obviously you know it's been quite an eventful um past year in terms of Doctor Who we've obviously had Eve of the Daleks on New Year's Day we had Flux at the end of last year but obviously the news of RTD coming back next year and the fact that this is Jodie Whittaker's second to final episode paired with the fact that we've got a Doctor companion relationship Thasmin established in the previous episode so Hazel let's go to you first <laughs> What were you thinking before the episode started? I was so fucking... Am I allowed to swear here? Yeah, all right. Like, this isn't for children, right? Like, they can be I mean, as opposed. Yeah, it's not directly for children, but okay, yeah, go on. so I'm allowed to swear. Okay, good. Yeah, I was so fucking excited. Like, I bought all the magazines with the articles and everything, and I read every single th- rumour online, and I was so excited when Ella Road got announced as a co-writer because we got a queer woman writing a queer story and the episode is very much like the queer relationship side was very much through a female lens because it was produced directed and co-written by a woman and I was super excited for that also it's just excited for Doctor Who yeah definitely I feel it's I feel it was gonna happen at some point like it's weird. I'm never. I'm not a huge fan of Doctor Companion relationships to begin with. We will discuss this in greater detail. Yeah, but, but, Thasmin but generally, is be- in my opinion, Thasmin is better than the other two we've had so far in New Who. Oh yeah, definitely. I feel. Yeah, I mean, we got inklings of some in Classic Who, but they weren't proper, really. Um, but yeah, it is. It is good the Doctor Who are doing that, and I feel. Yeah, we will discuss it more. But it was an interesting episode regarding that because we haven't really had an episode properly centered on the relationship between a doctor and a companion before so i thought yeah i was quite cough, excited cough. most yeah. of the rose and tenth doctor stuff yeah that yeah that i'm sorry great. i'm a proud penrose hater oh yeah it, it wasn't i great. think i think most people are at this point oh yeah uh so let's go to you luke what were your thoughts going into the episode so going into the episodes i was just well what were my thoughts i was just, Excited for more Doctor Who content since we've been starved since what feels like forever of anything. We've just been picking up snippets for the last few months and it's just been waiting and waiting for anything to happen. And then suddenly we get this episode and I came into it really excited, hoping, well, maybe it'll be the Flying Dutchman and maybe it'll be the TARDIS, the Master's TARDIS leading into the final uh, finale since we know the Master's going to be there. And whilst obviously that didn't come into fruition, I think we still got a rather solid episode. Yeah, definitely. So, I feel. Um, what you got? I'd like to to put in here saying the boat was quite cool. I mean, mm. the sea devils obviously. My ship you... there is it called Thasmin? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, so that was a swoosh as well, guys. He's going to be, uh, well, Anthony. Anthony. Yeah, he's going to be nipping in every now and then. He said he's just yeah. here for the vibes. So. Yeah. <laughs> he's a very vibey guy, if I do say a so. Casual myself. invasion. Yeah, swoosh is a character. He, he's, he's quite the quite the character. Um, in a good he way. is the main character, the star <laughs> of the show. Yeah, swoosh is the main character of this channel. I'm just a random side character here. Yeah, you are, Charlie. Yeah. Um, all right, so, yeah, Astro... Um, Luke, I do agree with you. Um, I feel it's, yeah, it, it was very exciting to get new Doctor Who because I feel the marketing for this era has been very 
lacklustre, to be honest, especially since like 2020 and Series 12. Yeah, I definitely uh, agree. The market, what was the market? I, the market, they're not marketing. There was marketing, anymore, question really. mark. <laughs> yeah, I know, like, right. They, I, I didn't really see any marketing. Like they uploaded a trailer on YouTube like two weeks before the episode, which conveniently released when I was on holiday. Um, oh, that's just depressing. Yeah, they did that for either the, well, not either the Daleks, sorry. Um, they did that for the main Flux trailer as well. It was really annoying, but... Um... It's an interview. I remember when the first Flux trailer came out and there was the hashtag find the doctor thing, and that oh, yeah. was really fun. I didn't really keep oh, up that... with it, but what it was a fun ride. That? What even happened with that? I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, that was that was really strange. But it was. Yeah. Overall, I think. It... <laughs> but to be honest, what's not strange? This is Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> well said. I feel yeah. yeah. I was just very excited generally to get more Doctor Who. Like you said, Luke, it was. It was just you know, very exciting to see more. And obviously the Sea Devils were the main sort of selling point of the episode. So, yeah, uh, let's quite, go to... They had quite wobbly mouths, I'd say. Mm. It, was, it was interesting to watch. I don't know if this like, is what... the appropriate for the channel, but why are the Sea Devils so ugly? Like, they're just oi, a bit Oi, 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 oi. Shut up. Shasty okay. uppity. <laughs> That's right. not what. That's not the quote, Luke. Shut it up, up, up. There we go. I'll hit, my, hit you with my shoe. I yeah. hit you with my shoe first, actually. Mm. All right. Oh, well. So okay, yeah, let's move on. Yes. Um, so Hazel, what were your like general like? If you had to sum up your opinions on the episode in sixty seconds, what would you say? <laughs> You're not timing me, but okay. Um. Very basic episode, bit underwhelming. There are some bits I don't know if I like them. And um, beach scene, and enter me screaming for like another sixty seconds. But uh, beach scene. Oh, and the visuals were really pretty. Yeah, yeah, that's that is a pretty good summation. I, I um. Yeah, I'll talk more about what I thought in a sec. Uh, Luke, what would you say? I think it looked better than the actual episode was. I kept expecting it to kick in. And I think the entire plot goes for... It feels like it's a two-parter, but the second part never comes, if you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. It, I feel just the plot, it, it went... To, I feel, I get the impression from this that they made a 60, maybe 70 minute long episode and the BBC said, nope, that's been 47 minutes. And they had to trim it down and it it just felt like it moved along at such a breakneck pace. I just... It's just event, event, event. There was, there was I don't feel there was really much breathing room there, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't Being, think it was brilliant. Yeah, that's a, that says a lot, I think, on the wafer thin plot where you feel like you're missing stuff out constantly. Yeah, like I've watched this twice now. I, I, I've just, you know, the first time I was talking on Discord a bit as well at the same time, like I usually do with Doctor Who. So. I didn't really, you know, I thought, oh, I've just missed a couple of bits out. It's fine. I'll catch them on a rewatch. And I didn't. It genuinely just glosses over some stuff. Like, sometimes I'm like, why are we here? You know, it, the stuff just happens and I don't really get why. It it moves along such a huge, you know, just a really fast pace that I just, I just find myself losing interest because what's happening, what's going on, you know, they just say huge plot elements in just 10 seconds and it's gone yeah I, I felt in terms of story it wasn't that great i feel um we might as well move on to the sea devils themselves now luke what did you think of the sea devils once i saw they were back i jumped for joy yeah. then i when i when i was watching the episode they still looked really good it was just weird that they were cgi i mean the cgi parts of the episode looked really really good and then there was that jump there's that jump at the start that just looks so naff. And it's like, look how they massacred my boys. I've waited 30, 30 years for them to return. And that's what I get. It looks a bit like if, you, if you're going, if you're like on one of those Lego games, like Lego Dimensions and you're jumping through a portal or something, that's what it looked like. Yeah. That's exactly what it looked like, yeah. 
Um, yeah. Hazel. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah? Oh, I was going to say, um, what did you think of the Sea Devils in this episode? I have not seen the original Sea Devils story because I have Wonder. hashtag not watched Classic Who. But How dare Devils, you? I don't, Watch I think it. they were just like knockoff Silurians and they were ugly. So. How yeah. dare you be so rude? <laughs> but like, I'm the Sea Devils look better than the original Silurians. Okay, yeah, fair enough, yeah. they do. But that's not really like a high bar to be, is it? Oh no, I think I think my, oi, my boys oi. are gorgeous over there. Are, are you are you saying that classic <laughs> who monsters do not look marvelous in themselves? Have you never classic seen classic who monsters? Have you look never like seen the had... bubble wrap monster? Swoosh. The Merca. Um, the An- Merca. Anthony. Classic Wait, who? Um, classic who? Can someone? Can I just get to talk, please? Classic yeah. who monsters look like they had a budget of twenty pounds and a cheese sandwich. That's because they did. Yeah, that's and the budget they actually And had. I love them for that, but they don't yeah. look that good, to be They're honest. They're charmingly awful. Boy. True. You I... murder. I know. Are a disgrace to Doctor Who. How to dare fair, you. They do have some good ones. But, yeah. Cough, yeah. cough, crinoid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, in terms of sea devils, I think... If there's one thing that Chibnall is actually quite good at, I think, it's bringing back past monsters. Like, he's done them well. Like Either the Daleks' best Dalek story in the whole of New Who. Yeah. I, I, ooh, I wouldn't quite I wouldn't go, go that far. It's, it's, it's the best one for <laughs> years, though. It's the best one, I'd say, since oh, yeah. probably Stolen Earth Journey's End. Stolen <laughs> Earth isn't that good. Okay, well, not slam- stand for the little sl- Slade and Slander. She's the best part of episode. Okay, yeah, no, I don't... I'm not slandering Elizabeth Sladen. Love her. Icon. Rest in peace. So, sorry. Sorry to put in. Are you saying... I mean, I yes, I understand. I should respect your opinion. I, I say the words, I should respect your opinion. <laughs> um, uh, but <laughs> Eve of the... Do- I, I liked it. I think it was fun. A fun episode to watch. But oh, God. Hmm. It was. It was. It. It was an episode. It. It happened. Okay, Charlie. It's can open. we get yes. back on track? I don't think your yes. <laughs> uptight YouTube audience will want all of this. Yes. Um. It does a lot of context stuff. Um. Yeah. So yeah. yes, we call um Hazel here murder on our server as a nickname. Yeah, we do because yes. guess what. Yeah, it's her actual name, basically. Murders people. Yeah, basically. <laughs> no yeah. joking. It's in a birth certificate, actually. I've seen it myself. It's lovely. It says murder, murder, murder. That's um that's her first, middle, and last name. <laughs> Quite lovely. Uh, I, I I don't know why her parents exactly named her that, but you know, you know, good for them, I suppose. No, I went back in time using a TARDIS and named myself. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> um... Moving on. Yes. So, um, in terms of the Sea Devil, yeah, I think if there's one thing he's good at, it's, it's doing past monsters. Like, obviously, the Dalek trilogy, he's done uh, the Lone Cyberman. I thought that was really good. Um, Sontarans and Weeping Angels, that was probably the best two episodes in Flux. So he's good at doing past monsters and especially doing redesigns of them, especially like the Sontarans. So I was oh, yeah, the Sontarans look gorgeous. Yeah, I love, those new son- I love those new Sontarans. They're amazing. Yeah, because it's just, it's basically a version of the classic Who design, but with good production values, which is what I'd rather see than a complete Silurian-style redesign, which I don't hate the new Silurians, but they don't look anything like the classic Who ones. I'd rather they just looked like the classic Who ones, but good. But anyway. Yeah, like um, classic Who, but with more budget. Exactly, yeah. That destroys the whole point of classic Who, if you think about it, but... Anyway. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, in terms of the Sea Devils, I was excited about them going in. Like, it looked like a really good design, and it looked like it'd be, it'd be a pretty interesting premise, you know, Silurians in, what, 19th, 18th century China? I, I don't really know where this is at, the South China Sea. Um, South, e- South Asia, Southeast Asia, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere around there. Where was it said? They did they specifically mention China. They did mention it. They did say that they did. where they were. Yeah, they did. Yeah. So off the coast of China somewhere. Um, but overall, I feel they were a bit underutilized, to be honest. I don't know about you guys. It felt like they weren't really in this that much. No, I don't think I don't think I think they were in it enough. Um, you know mm. who wasn't in it enough? 
Madam King. <laughs> yes. And yeah. you know what else wasn't in enough? Thasman. <laughs> Nothing was in this enough, really, I think. It, it was just... Yeah, we didn't get enough time. Like, so much was cut out. Yeah. It should have been a two-parter. It should have been longer. Yeah, definitely. I feel we could have had one part a few weeks ago, maybe, and then another yeah, part now. Yeah, exactly. But it just, they, it felt like they cut so much out, so we don't get enough Thasmin. And I, I didn't yeah, think I'd say that, because I wasn't... They should have included Madame Ching's uh, uh, sh- uh, ship crew at some point, because... Yeah, rather than it being yeah a they should. Yeah, they really should have. Yeah, I was expecting more of, like, an epic, you know, like, an epic pirate story with, yeah, obviously, same. the added it was just, It just fell a bit flat. It That's felt, not to say like I a... really love it. I will pick everything I love to stop to it like was pieces. lovely apart from the apart from the uh the sea devil's uh white EP style jump up yeah. onto the ship. Yeah. <laughs> it felt like a discount uh okay, but the black spot. can we talk about Jodie Whittaker's flip? Which Sorry. one was it? Jody I Whittaker's think flip. the doctor I don't know if I've imagined it but I think the doctor did a flip at one point oh yeah no no she did she did a flip that was so out out. of character but i loved it it was just so funny that oh i think i know what you mean i rewatched that sword fight and it felt so weird because it was just like so not doctor who yeah yeah, i know right but it was amazing i I love it i can imagine pertwee doing that yeah somewhat the editing and direction in this episode was so strange yeah like Now, moving on to that, in terms of the CGI, there was some really dodgy stuff here. Like, besides the jump, like, the cracks in the statue were pretty awful. Oh, God, yeah. I got secondhand embarrassment from watching that in front of my family. Oh, there's a cat in front of me. Hello there. (laughs) Sorry, I'm in a car in the street, and, yeah, there's just a cat. Oh, it's lying down. Oh, that's (laughs) funny. We love Anthony's, like... Random interludes. Oh yes, we do. Yes, sorry. Um, I'd, I'd just like to uh, so, say sorry, Charlie, uh, to sorry. your audience uh, that's listening right now. Despite my posh-sounding accent, Spruce. <laughs> has, he, has he been run over by a car? Sorry. Oh, you're still we alive. Mourn. Interesting. Yes. Anyway, anyway, no, no, no. sorry, so, go on. yeah, there was some dodgy stuff as well, like the explosion that we had towards the start as well. Um, and in terms of the direction, I mean, it, it was like it was visually striking, it looked pretty good, but like the, the, the fight scene that we had was very weirdly yeah. edited. It was I very, think the main problem, it's not, I don't think it's a problem, but the director was used to making like contemporary short films and I don't think mm. that technique transfers all that well into sci-fi, but I still think it was quite good. Yeah, it, it felt was brilliant. It was so beautiful. They give me the direction that the choppy editing gave me the same feeling I get whenever I watch Quantum of Solace. When you yes. just don't know which way to look because it's just not focusing on anything because you've got a split second on one thing, a split second on another thing. But yeah. I, did, I would say the production design, what well, you didn't spend on like cast and crew because there were literally no one in the production. What well, there was no characters were there. There was just CGI devils, the Doctor and Fam, and two, two or three side characters, and that was it. So it okay. felt really legit. But what they spelt on that, the production design was gorgeous i i never doubted we weren't in that period which is strange because normally they don't do historicals justice in that way in which... yeah and it was yeah it was lovely yeah so, they normally just stick in also can field. we talk about the doctor and yaz's costumes yes i yes, wanted yes. to get onto that they look gorgeous i want that uh hey. sorry i'd just like to butt in and say here i'm probably going to be off now in a moment so, <laughs> everyone yeah. say goodbye to swoosh in a moment. Goodbye. Bye, Swoosh. Bye, Swoosh. I'm staying until I really will have to go. All right. Which I think might be in a few moments. Yeah, it's now. All right. I'll see you. <laughs> Bye, Swoosh. To, to those watching, please, in the comments, say goodbye to Swoosh. Yeah, say drop a goodbye, Swoosh, in the comments. <laughs> see, Charlie, I'm great at this YouTube thing. I should start my own YouTube channel. Yes. <laughs>
All right, goodbye, Swoos. Swoos, you going? <laughs> oh, he's still here, guys. Oh. Still drop a goodbye, Swoos, in the comments. Yes, because I don't think he's going to be talking. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, in terms of the costumes, they looked pretty brilliant. Like, I don't very... really know what to say about Madame Ching and the other Chinese historical period clothing costumes because I don't know that much about Chinese period clothing. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I love the uh, Doctor and Yaz's costumes. Yeah. And, oh, don't forget Dan. Oh, my God, Dan. Dan's yeah. outfit was brilliant, so I won't hear another word against it. It was just iconic. It was very camp, and I love that. Yes. Like... I, I, wa I wanted a sequel to Evil Dan in that. I wish we got some more slightly Evil Dan moments. I know, right. Okay, but you know what was so out of character? What? The doctor saying Dan's outfit was over the top. Like, girly, a few regenerations <laughs> back, you were literally wearing a rainbow coat. Yeah, that was interesting. Don't diss, don't diss the coat. I'm not dissing the coat, I'm just saying... It was over the top. Yeah, like, Doc, if you're going to wear that, you can't really call anyone else's costume over the top can you i mean she normally does wear one now with rainbow lining with a rainbow i love her outfit i will not hear anything against it i prefer her flux inverted outfit you know for the joe martin thing i think that's a much nicer yes. coat. i love joe martin's outfit as well like yeah they did a really good job styling these doctors Yes, all right. Also, so... I feel like this is like the one episode where I actually like Yaz's costume because besides this and Spyfall, yeah, they don't. I don't really know what the stylists are trying to do with Yaz. Yeah, they just sort of gave her. It's kind of just fit into the <laughs> companion, like cardboard box of jumper and jeans, but it didn't. It never really was like Clara's costuming. Oh my god, was amazing. Yeah, and Bill's was. I love Bill's outfits. Hmm. Amy's I quite like as well. But I don't think they really knew what they were doing with Yaz or really with Graham and Ryan when they were there in terms hmm. of costuming. I think Ray Holmond is more yeah. of like a special effects costumer. Like he does like special hmm. stuff, but he doesn't really know how to dress everyday characters. Yeah, definitely. I feel, I mean, I, I don't know too much about fashion or anything, but I, I could tell that the costume department did put a lot of work into Amy, Clara, um, Bill, the Moffat era companions. Yeah, like whereas... their costumes match their character arcs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You but... miss Hayley Newbauer, etc. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the costume department, the costume work for this was lovely. I, I'm not too versed in the intricacies of the, you know, the period accurate clothing, but yeah, for the most part, the main character's cl uh, clothing did look quite good. Yaz in that outfit. Yes. Mm. Chef's kiss. So we have two more main points to go over. The first of which is the side characters in this. Now, we only really got like two besides the Sea Devils themselves, or three. We got Madame Ching. We got... Um, uh, we got Ji Hun from you know a few hundred years ago who obviously came back and sacrificed himself at the end to save everyone and we got that other guy whose father was killed by madame ching and then snuck onto her pirate ship with dan with dan yes hey. so, <laughs> uh, no, first the first thing i want to mention before murder talks about um well hazel talks about her character her opinions on the characters is that guy i can't even remember his name he, but neither like madame ching in the, the start of the episode kill his dad and he was like gonna kill her for it and then she he lets them go same thing for her yeah i know he like she says all right you can stay on my ship then he hugs her like, i've got a few problems with that i'm gonna talk about them later yes um but generally i just found him really annoying i didn't get his purpose in the story it's yeah, just like i don't think he really like i get he he was just a plot device i feel yeah, I, I don't even think he was that. He, I don't yeah. think the plot would have changed much if he wasn't there. It was really just to show how people were impacted by Madame Ching killing people. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess. Just, yeah, I didn't he just care wasn't, for him. He wasn't really fleshed out enough. Yeah, like I feel they just thought, you know what, this is going to be such an empty story with barely any human characters. Let's just add a random one in. Yeah. But 
I guess. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't great. Um so let's go to Luke first while because I you know I've talked to Hazel a lot about stuff. Um I talk a lot, sorry about that. <laughs> um Luke, what did you think of the side characters in this? Well, I think the main point is what even was the other guy's name? That's 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 just how forgetful like of a character he is. You don't you don't even know anything about him other than you killed my mother. Uh okay. G Hun I felt didn't need to be introduced. He was just kind of there just for a second secondary plot twist, really. Again, the thing doesn't change. They're just chasing his treasure. He doesn't need to be there. Madame Ching, I think, was brilliant. I think she's a brilliant character, even though if a little plain where she's just... You don't know her intentions until she makes them clear towards the end. But again, I think that's because, like you say, the plot seemed to be cut down. So there's probably more for her to do because there seemed to be nothing for her to do other than just be like, kind of bounce off of everyone. Yeah, I feel if there was more time in this, which there obviously was to begin with, I don't think there would have been too much more Thasmin. I feel that was kind of what there was in the episode. But it, it gave me the impression that there would have been a lot more development of Madden Ching and uh, Ji Hun and the Sea Devils as well. I feel that plot was cut down a bit more than Thasmin was, which I'm not, I don't hate, but like, I wish they'd actually focused a bit more on the, the plot of the story. That should always come first. But anyway, yeah, carry on. Um, I mean, that's all the second new characters there were. The Sea Devils that were there, there was no real character to them. Um, mm. the, uh, what was I going to say? But my, I think Madame Ching was the highlight of the side characters, partly because she was the one we got the most, spent the most time with. But um, I don't know, it felt like Ji Hun was kind of like that guy from Timeless Children who sacrificed himself at the end. It just felt yeah. like such a rehash of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel it's just a recurring trend, especially in the Chibnall era, of just pointless characters who are only there to make a big sacrifice at the end. Like, I get why he did the sacrifice and that he'd been kept, obviously, by the Sea Devils for hundreds of years and stuff and wanted to avenge them. But like it just felt so like i didn't care if the sea devils literally killed every side character in this story i i wouldn't care i just didn't find myself you know you know i i can i couldn't bring myself to bother about these characters like in i feel especially in the rtd era and even in classic who when we got several episodes to like these characters I actually cared about them. Like a classic example is Inferno from 1970. We spent seven episodes with these characters in two different versions, in two different universes. And by the end, I was actually quite sad that most of them died at the end, you know. But in this one, I just couldn't bring myself to really care about them all that much. Anyway, rant over about Inferno. Uh, Hazel, what did you think of them? I, like, the guy whose father died and... Jihun, I don't really know what to feel about him, but mm. his costume was really just stick a dragon on it, and it's Chinese. And, like, the drag and iconography in his costume literally made no sense. Yeah, I did feel that was a little bit random there. Um... Yeah, it was, yeah, and Madame Ching, while I do like her as a character, I feel like she does, like, follow several harmful stereotypes of Asian women, as an Asian woman myself. I just... Like, the way she kills that guy's father and then he ends up kind of almost being in love with her kind of seems like a bit of a, like a dragon woman stereotype to me, which is the stereotype of Asian women who use their sexuality to, like, lure men and it's kind of a cautionary tale. And I'm not sure. But Yeah, I get what you're meaning from, like, House of Flying Daggers, etc. Yeah, blue yeah. Run. Yeah, but, yeah, I just don't think Shreven Roll's very good at writing, um side characters and I would have seen I like to see more of Ella Rhodes involvement because like it's very clear where she did like write what she did write for this episode cue the thousand scenes which I loved but we can get into that later so yeah that's what I think yeah. about the side characters yeah in terms of Madame Ching I I didn't really notice that to begin with to be honest I was more focused on literally everything else going on like I didn't like I said I, don't, I didn't really care about the side characters enough to 
notice that. But after you said the first time, yeah, I, I definitely saw that on my rewatch today. Um, I, I will say she was well acted. And the fight yeah, scenes. Yeah, she was really well acted. Yeah, yeah the fight scenes with you. her were cool, as I, I guess. But yeah, I, I do also, definitely. Also, not to bust in, but we didn't really get to know Madden Chick. Like, I think Chibna, the Chibnall era does a really j- good job with historicals. Mm. Yeah. Like with Mary Seacole and. Um, I think that was the Rosa worst Parks historical. Stuff. They, they really characterized those historical figures and brought them to life. Um, Madam Ching was just kind of there. Mm. Yeah, I think definitely. that's I think that's hit the nail on the head. I think this was the worst Chibnall era historicals, and he's done his best episodes are historicals. Yeah, no he's a great oh, yes. he's great at writing historicals. I think the main problem with Chibnall's writing is that he has a very specific idea of what sci-fi is, and he tries to follow that idea when he could be applying all the stuff he's done for like Torchwood and um the other Doctor Who episodes he written, he's written and Broadchurch into this and he could be adding so much better emotional context and stuff, but he just doesn't. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I feel he's he's a very skilled writer that doesn't really apply himself very well yeah. to... It's like, like in my school reports. Yeah. <laughs> has potential. Yeah. Needs to apply themselves more. Yeah, I feel he's a good writer, but he's not. he's just not suited to showrunner, in my opinion. I don't feel... Yeah. He's yeah. making it properly he coordinated. Not to say him. that I don't absolutely love his era, by the way. I actually really, <laughs> really love the Thirty Doctors era. She's mm. my second favorite Doctor. All right, so that brings us to the end of the first part of this uh, podcast. It's turning out to be quite a lengthy one, so let this be the two-parter that Legend of the Sea Devils should have been. <laughs>